and welcome to INCAP, or International Cultural Arts Program, where we learn about different cultures, holidays, and professions through the most iconic, influential, and creative people in their industry. My name is Amber McKenzie, and today we are meeting with the iconic voice and TV yeah. actress Jennifer Cody. You might have you might know her from Princess and the Frog or um, Mickey's Roadster Racers, Winx, The Good Fight, and many many other um, things. She has a very extensive resume. <laughs> um, I am beyond honored that she has. Um, taken time to spend with us today so so before we get started i just wanted to ask how are you doing today i am good thank you so much for having me and um yeah i mean this is a very exciting i i am excited I, I don't know who preceded me who else you've interviewed oh <laughs> um so we actually haven't interviewed a lot of actors um but uh -huh. um we've interviewed different people in different professions such as for halloween we had um pumpkin carvers and ah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um one of my very dear friends julia marley ended up coming up here she uh, was an actress in the j team and netflix's the prom oh. so um yeah we've had some very really cool fun, influential people here, but I'm very excited to be meeting with you. <laughs> um, Yay. Um, so let's just get started. My first question is, how old were you when you started acting? Huh. Um, well, my first memory, and like I've seen pictures, I was four and I was a duck um, in a play. Um, and my mom tells a story that uh, I didn't have any lines. I just had to walk down the, the center aisle of the theater and walk up on stage as a duck with my best friend who was also a duck. And um, she said, you know, we rehearsed for like months and then the night of the show came and I started walking down the aisle and I, all of a sudden out of nowhere, something was like, why aren't I talking? And I just started quack, quack, quacking all the way up the aisle and um, it like broke the whole house down. So I guess that was my first acting job. Um, but my uh, first professional job uh, was in the national tour of Gypsy um, that I actually got um, when I was still in college. So that was the first time that I got paid <laughs> to do this. <laughs> nice. Um, what inspired you um, or how did you know that you wanted to be a professional actress? You know, it's funny. I didn't know it was an actual job. I didn't grow up... Um, like my family didn't watch musicals on TV or we didn't have cast albums. We didn't have any of that stuff. Um, I grew up with like two brothers, you know, and there was just a lot of uh, sports and stuff around the house. Um, but I was in theater in high school and my drama teacher took us to New York City to see plays once a year. And um, I remember seeing the production of Noises Off, which is a very, very funny play. And everybody, the audience was laughing so hard. And I remember looking around thinking, this is so amazing that all these people are laughing so hard at what's happening on the stage. And I was like, oh, I, I think this is what I want to do. Like I saw people up there on stage and I was like, that's, that, that seems to me like the right fit. So up until then, I didn't know you could actually do it. <laughs> um, what is your favorite memory on set? Hmm. Uh, it's interesting. I, I mean, I love, I love the, the sets are kind of funny because most of the TV stuff I do, I'm not, um, I'm not part of the everyday cast. So it's kind of stressful. You, you kind of, you go on, you have to do one or two or three scenes. And, um, I, I find it very stressful as opposed to being in a show that you just go to and you know, the people and there's a, a comfort level. Um, so I guess I would have to say probably doing voiceovers. Um, I just, I love being in a booth. I love creating, um, Princess and the Frog was like the most amazing creative process I'd ever been a part of. Um, they actually, they let you, they, I, I guess people don't really know this, but when you're doing a voiceovers, like for a movie, you're all by yourself. You don't actually get to do the scenes with people. Um, so you have to act and you have to do um, a line like multiple ways so that when they're putting it together, they have options. And so that's fun to me. 
I love just taking a line and having to do it five different ways. Um, and the Princess and the Frog was amazing because they videotaped me. And so I didn't have to, I didn't have to put lip dubbing to what was already on the page. And, and so I got to just be so free. And um, I guess that was probably the most exciting project I've done. I love Princess and the Frog. I grew up watching Princess and the Frog, and I actually did a musical, and I played Charlotte. Um, oh, you did! <laughs> Princess and the Frog. It was so fun. <laughs> oh, that's so good. I actually, um, uh, I, you could see it. I have a poster behind um, on my wall of it, and um, a new doll came out a couple days ago. Charlotte has a doll, but um, a new doll came out of, uh, it's like a playset set in Little Charlotte. Um, and so I started getting emails of everyone like, I just bought the new Charlotte doll. So I ran out to Target and got one. <laughs> so <laughs> go get the new Target doll. It's really cute. <laughs> um, how do you get ready for an audition or how do you prepare for an audition? Um, I guess it depends on what, what I'm auditioning for. Um, if it's a musical, I have to warm up. I have to vocalize. Um, I have to, you know, there's so much about getting ready and going to where you're going. A lot has changed since the, um, the pandemic because most of our auditions now happen uh, just like this, uh, which makes it a lot easier. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, uh, I think, you know, preparing, knowing all the material, that's really important um, because I always say there's nothing you can do once you're in the room because so much of it is out of your hands, whether they like you, whether they don't like what you look like or what you sound like or or they're looking for something completely different. That's kind of out of your hands. And I always say, just be prepared as much as possible. Um, so I guess that's what I do. I just prepare the material. Um, if it's a voiceover, I don't have to do my hair and makeup, <laughs> which is nice. Um, and yeah, and I guess I always kind of stretch whether I'm, I'm going in for a musical or dance or, um, or an acting uh, piece, because I think there's just something about being connected to your body that, um, that helps you no matter what you're auditioning for. All right, so when you are not on set or preparing for an audition or a job, what do you like to do? What do I like to do? I have a dog, I love my dog. <laughs> um, I'm married, so I like to travel a lot with my husband. Um, you know, all that stuff that we took for granted before the pandemic. Now I'm like, I just want to go somewhere. I want to be outside. Uh, um, I love, uh, you know, hanging out with friends. Um, I read a lot. Uh, yeah, and I love seeing theater. I'm very lucky to live in New York City because there's always something new opening or, um, you know, someone singing a concert or uh, a new dance company. So that's, you know, I kind of love it. That's why I do it. So to see other people do it is really, really fun. I really miss going to Broadway productions. We lived in Denver for a time and there's a huge theater there and they bring in companies and we used to go like every month because oh. we had um, like season tickets or something. Mm -hmm. And we used to um, go every month and see a new Broadway production. And I miss that so much. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Yeah. And, and you know, we haven't had it for two years. So, um, it's just now New York is opening up again. And so we're just, I'm actually leaving um, tomorrow to go do a production in Florida. So it's nice to, to get back to doing it. Nice. <laughs> um, so Princess and the Frog is set in New, York, New Orleans. What has been your favorite place to travel to? I just came back, my last trip um, before the pandemic was to Portugal. Um, and I feel like I just didn't see enough of it, but that was uh, pretty spectacular. I've also been to South Africa. And if I had to pick any place, I guess I would say South Africa. Um, I was fortunate they have um, something called the Playbill Cruise, where um, the Playbill Magazine does a cruise each year, uh, a couple, I guess. And uh, my husband and I went on the one to Vietnam and Cambodia. So like that was exciting because that's probably not a place I would normally go visit. Um, but yeah, every, I guess I guess if I had to pick one place, I would say I would say South Africa. I have a friend from South Africa, and she she's the best. Oh, the food! The food is so good. <laughs> <laughs> so you voiced the character Charlotte LaBeouf. How did you feel when you um, found out that Charlotte was going to be a character that you could meet in the parks? Uh, 
I still haven't met her. I actually saw, um, I was at the park right um, when it first, when the movie first opened. And was it Disneyland or Disney World? I can't remember. And um, she was on a float. And, and I was like, oh, yeah. And I was like shaking my hands and screaming for her. Um, and now, like, I just went back to Disney. And um, they don't do any meet and greets right now because of COVID. So um, I'm hoping when uh, the new Splash Mountain ride opens, um, that's going to be redone as Princess of the Frog. I hope that uh, Charlotte is, is featured. Fingers crossed. I mean, how can you f do Princess and the F Frog themed ride and not feature Charlotte? I mean, I like... hope so. I hope so. <laughs> just one no squeal. I just want when it when it goes down that big hill at the end. I just want a big squeal from Charlotte. So hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So Princess and the Frog is set in the 1920s. If you could time travel to any time or place, mm. what would it be, or when would it be, and why? Huh. Ooh, time travel. This is, I kind of, I always said I was born in the wrong decade. I kind of feel like I, I would love to go to the 1950s. Um, so I guess if I wanted to be alive in the 50s, I would say maybe born in the 40s. Because um, I feel like uh, all the TV shows that I grew up watching in the 70s, like I would have loved to have been on those. Like Love Boat is one of my favorite shows. And I always think, oh, if I was just born a little earlier. Mm -hmm. Um I like the, the the humor of that time period, and I love the music of that time period. So, yeah, 1950s. <laughs> I love the 1950s as well. All right, so who is an actor, voice actor, or film actor that inspires you? Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I love Kristen Bell. Um, I love her. I, I knew her from Broadway. She was um, on Broadway with me, uh, I think in 2003 or two. Um, and I just, I love projects that she does. I love her humor. Um, I love her. Uh, I, I, she produces a lot. I think she's a really smart, smart lady. So I would say Kristen Bell. <laughs> I love Kristen Bell. My sis that's one of my favorite, my sister's favorite. She has a little boy, and um, she loves their brand, Hello Bello. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's perfect for her. <laughs> um, so if you could do a film or TV show with any actor or artist, who would it be and why? Hmm. Uh, I mean, I, of course, I'm probably going to say Meryl Streep, right? Like... I don't know if it'd be fun, but I think that like just to see her work, I find that I get better watching other people. Um, for a long time, I was a what we call a reader at auditions, where I would read the the scenes with all the different actors that would come in, and I think I got to be such a better actor watching other people. Um, so I would probably pick Meryl Streep because I think I would learn so much. I've also heard that she is, like, the nicest human being there is. Figures, right? She's the best <laughs> actor and the nicest person. Best work, <laughs> best work ethic, like, best talent. She gets all the talent, all the kindness, all the work ethic. Like, what is left for all of us? <laughs> I think that's that says, like, you know what? She's just not intimidated by anyone because she knows she's the best. So why be mean, right? I find most of the meanness comes from people who are just not really self-confident so <laughs> all right so what other areas of art have you dappled in um i don't paint i'm not <laughs> i can't paint i'm terrible at like visual arts um i like design i like um i guess like architecture and home design i love that kind of art um i like taking pictures uh and I sing and I dance. So I guess that's it. Yeah, I'm terrible. I'm terrible at drawing. I just don't do that well at all. <laughs> all right. What is your favorite movie? It can be one you've been in or it could be something else. Money Pit. I know. The Money Pit. It's, it was like a movie in the 90s, I think. Maybe the 80s. I don't know. But it had Tom Hanks and Shelley Long. Right? Was it Shelley Long? Yeah, and um, 
it's about they they're fixing up a house and it is I, I still I can't get through it without laughing so hard that tears are running down my face um so if you haven't seen it right I'll now, have to watch that one I've actually yeah. never heard of it oh it's so funny <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what is your favorite type of character to voice? Mean. I like the mean ones. Um, I did a voice for Winx Club of um, uh, uh, Darcy, who's one of the witches. And um, I would sometimes we would record the three witches would get to record together. And, you know, all the, the Winx actually are like these really sweet girls and they're all sweet. And then the, the witches are just evil. And that's just fun. It's fun to cackle and ha <laughs> ha and oh, I love it. <laughs> when you do voiceover jobs, do you come to Los Angeles or do you stay in New York? Um, both, it depends. Um, for Princess and the Frog, I, I think I did it in both places. Uh, Winx Club, I did in both places. I was living in LA when I got Winx Club. And so it ran for, I think four seasons. So. Uh, I had moved back to New York, so I just did it every week here. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I've, I've done it in both places. I've done it when I was on the road doing a show. I actually did Winx Club. Like, I was in Florida once. I, I recorded there. I, um, I recorded in Boston once. So it's really easy because everything is done via your computer and a microphone. So you can pretty much do it anywhere. Nice. <laughs> um, let's see. Where did I leave off? <laughs> <sighs> What genre of movies, TV, or Broadway is your favorite? I like, again, the 50s. I like um, 1950s musicals. Uh, movies, I like the, the 80s movies like um, Breakfast Club and um, Pretty in Pink. Like, they, they don't hold up well now. Like, you read, you watch them now, and you're like, ooh, that's icky. But... I loved watching them then. There's like that nostalgia thing. Um, so yeah, I guess I like rom-coms. I am. I'm a sucker for a rom-com. <laughs> have you seen Marry Me yet with Jennifer Lopez? I have. Oh, I, I love that one. Loved it. Oh, it was just so amazing. <laughs> there are billboards everywhere here in Los Angeles for it. Oh, wow. Um, so I keep like seeing J-Lo and I'm like, oh, I've seen that movie. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> What would you love to do next? A uh, rom-com, TV, film, a period piece? Um, I like, you know, like the, I'm probably like a sitcom. Sitcom. Like a, just a sitcom where um, I always have this want to play this character that um, I always say works in the office of like some, if it's like an office sitcom and she's like the copy person but she's really terrible at a job. So if she's not on every episode, you just see like things coming from the copy room, like stapled wrong and there's like food on it. Like that's, I, I want to play like a really incompetent Xerox girl in an office <laughs> sitcom. I know it's very specific, but that's what I want. <laughs> that sounds perfect. <laughs> I, I love that. It's just, it's so specific. <laughs> yeah. What is the coolest slash out-of-body experience that you've ever had? Um, I think meeting, um, meeting Barbara Streisand. Yeah, so she came to see a show I was in, and she had gone to um, uh, one of the dressing rooms, and I was like, I'm not leaving this building until I say hello, because I, you know, I grew up listening to her, I danced to her music, and... So I knocked on the door and I was like, hi, um, Ms. Streisand, I just wanted to say hello and I, you were a huge you know, inspiration to me. And I just, and she said, how do you do that thing with your voice? Because I made the sound throughout the show and I hadn't planned on her asking me any questions. So I immediately could not speak. And I was like, ah, mama, yeah, huh. like just gibberish. There were no words coming out of my mouth. And then I just said, thank you. And I walked out. <laughs> so that. That was a little out of body. Do you have a lot of experiences where um, where you're just like so starstruck with somebody? I know like as actors, you can't be starstruck with people, but also at the same time, the inside of your brain is like, oh my gosh, it's this person. Yeah, I you know, it's funny. I see, I meet stars all the time and I don't really have that um, 
that thought most of the time. But I think because she's so, uh, so much of an icon and she's so much like a, a part of growing up, like hearing her voice, her voice was, you know, it's funny, I did Beauty and the Beast um, on Broadway and I did it with Andrea McArdle and she was the original Annie and um, she was playing Belle. And so I would listen, I'm like, oh, she sounds like Annie. And I'm like, that is Annie. Like I grew up listening to her thinking like that's how I wanted to sound. Like she had such a specific voice. So um, those moments I think are, are the only times when I get a little, it's such an inspiration to my life in growing up that when I meet those people, um, it's a little overwhelming. <laughs> All right, for those of the audience who are curious, what is the audition process like for a voiceover? Um, well, you'll get, so you get the audition on your, you know, in an email and you'll, sometimes you'll get a picture of what the character would look like, sometimes just a description. Um, and then just lines and, or they'll send a scene um, and you only do your lines in the scene, which is really hard because you, you have to, make choices without anyone, a scene partner. Um, and so usually you'll do, uh, you can do like a couple different takes of the character. I kind of look at the, if there's a picture, I look at what I think the picture, like if, she, if it's a character that's small or if it's an animal, like what that might sound like in my head. Um, and I play around a few times on my, on my computer with my microphone, listening back to see if it, if it sounds the way I want it to sound. Sometimes I'll take like big, big choices because you think for the audition, they, they're not seeing you, they're just hearing you. And they must listen to just, you know, the same lines over and over again. So sometimes I'll just try to throw something really crazy off the wall just to make them go and, and perk up maybe when my, my audition tape comes on. Um, but that's it. And then, then if there's a callback, you usually will work with a director and they'll ask you to do it different ways to see if you're versatile in the booth. Um, because you know, once you're hired, it, sometimes it's for, you know, a whole year or two years or three years, you know, so they want to make sure that you, um, as the character develops, that you have the ability to develop different ways and stuff. So that's pretty much it. You've also been in Broadway productions. Um, what shows have you been in so far? Um, on Broadway? Yes. Um, let's see. Let's see, uh, Cats, um, Beauty and the Beast, Susical, I'm missing one in there, Grease, um, Pajama Game, You're in Town, Shrek, Christmas Story, I feel like I'm missing one in there. I don't, those and I, maybe one more, but I can't think of what it was. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> um, what is your favorite Broadway production? Either one that you've been in or just your favorite Broadway musical? Um, I like doing You're in Town. Um, I think it was a really smart show and it was, um, it was timely. Um, I also was doing it at the time of 9-11. Um, so that has a sentiment, sentimental place in my heart. Um, and uh, a show that didn't make it to Broadway that I did off Broadway um, was called The Wild Party. And that was also another show that was, um, you know, a small cast, everybody, everyone was on stage the whole time. So I think those two shows were probably my most um, favorite to have done. How has COVID-19 impacted your career? <laughs> well, we didn't have career for two years. That was, um, it's crazy. I went back, I think in June. June was the first show back for me. Um, it, it, it makes you not take it for granted. That's for sure. I mean, I think this business is already really hard to be able to work and um, continuously, you know, get jobs, um, but then to have it taken away, like the whole industry for two years, um, it, it makes you realize like how much you really love what you do and how luck lucky you are to have that. 
um, it's changed. Uh, it's changed our whole business. Now we audition like I'll audition for a musical like this. Um, so it's yeah, it, it's changed it every in every every way. Um, hopefully, we'll get through this and we won't have another shutdown. Um, and people will come back and see shows again, and we can take the masks off soon, I hope. Um, but yeah, you know, our business, the three things that are in our business are like, we stand next to each other, we spit at each other, basically, and um, we touch each other when we dance. Like all those things that you weren't allowed to do, that was our business. So um, yeah, I'm glad it's over, or getting to be over. <laughs> Do you have any hobbies? Hmm. Yeah, well, I read. Like, we said that before. I, we read. I read. I play with my dogs. Um, I crochet. Um, what else do I do? I don't really... I mean, I guess that's it. I think traveling is a hobby. So I'm hoping <laughs> to do that again soon. Cooking. I like to cook. Um, yeah, I think that's what I do. What is your favorite book? Um, I like this book called Pillars of the Earth. Um, it is Ken Folia. It, 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 now there's a, a prequel and a sequel to, um, it's, it's about generations of a family. Um, I love the time period of like, uh, 1800s. I love, uh, reading about his historical figures. Um, like the whole, uh, the British monarchy. I love reading those kind of books. Um, I love biographies. Uh, yeah, yeah, those are my favorites. <laughs> if you weren't an actor, what would you want to be? Mm. Maybe a politician. Really? Yeah. Um, I think maybe I, not, a, not a, on the big stage, like probably like a mayor or a governor. Yeah, I think I'd like to govern. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you had one piece of advice that you could give an aspiring actor, what would it be? I always said, like, I'm very, I'm tiny. I'm four foot eleven. Um, I have this crazy voice, and I think I always was trying to be something else. Like, I was trying to be actors that I saw come before me, and. It wasn't until I was older that I realized, oh, wait, I am ne never going to be better than them at being them. I should just be me. And so I wish I wish we knew that more, especially now I think the internet, so many young actors and actresses watch people on the internet and they try to be them or emulate them. And, and I'd say, like, just scrap that. And all those things that you think make you not right, lift those up and use them because they make you the best you that you can be. So me being little and me being having this crazy voice has actually made me unique. And so I would say find the uniqueness as opposed to trying to be like everybody else. That's great advice. Hmm. If people want to follow you or learn more about your career, how would they do so? Um, well, I'm on Twitter. Um, it's jennifer.cody.56. Uh, I'm on Instagram. Uh, I think it's just Jen Cody on Instagram. Um, and I have, there's a fans of Jen Cody page on Facebook. That's it. I tend to uh, respond to Twitter mostly. Well, thank you so much for doing this. It was a pleasure meeting you. Yay, um, thank you for having me. I love talking to fellow actors. I <laughs> <laughs> know what it's like to go through this. So yeah. um, it's, it was very wonderful meeting you. And me I, too. I really hope that our paths cross one of these days again. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. It was nice meeting you. It was wonderful meeting you as well. Bye, so, Amber. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to Jennifer Cody. If you would like to learn more about the Performers with Purpose Foundation, please visit our website at performerswithpurposefoundation.com or you can learn more through my Instagram or through Facebook at Performers with Purpose Foundation. Thank you so much and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye!